Welcome to the first Friday Arts Walk. 
My name is Janelle McCoy. I am your celebrity judge. No, just kidding. Um, I'm uh, the executive director of the Oregon Bach Festival, and this is my third art walk, or, or hosting the art walk. I've been able to walk it a few more times than that. And I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. So if you've never been on an art walk before, and this is the first stop, uh, then what we do is we spend a few, a few minutes uh, in each place to get to know the artist, and we talk to the artist and, and look at the art, and then we go on to the next place. And so I see a lot of uh, guides, that's great. So if you have one of your Lane Arts Council guides, they will tell you where we're going from, from place to place. And because I am with the Bach Festival, uh, and we are sponsored tonight my shameless plug is that the Bach Festival is about to start you know so in a couple weeks our opening Yay. night our opening celebration we'll, we will have uh, Mozart Requiem and Mozart Symphony number 29 with Jane Glover and I hope to see you all there for all of them you know they're all great it's hard for me to choose in fact I'd love to give another shout out to our media sponsor tonight which is KLCC that is where my dial is and I hope it is for you too um, tonight, uh, we also have Kesey Square, uh, which is uh, another sponsor, Arts Alive, an interdisciplinary and spontaneous arts collaboration highlighting dance and musical performances is happening now in Kesey Square. So stop by before 8 p.m. before the community dance. I myself am not a dancer, but I have no shame, so I may <laughs> join in. You can laugh and point, as most people do. I want to give special thanks to the City of Eugene, Cultural Services, Downtown Program Fund, and Summit Bank. We have uh, a really good friend at Summit Bank, Jenny Bennett. I don't know if she's in the room, but we want to thank her also for supporting the event tonight. Tonight's artist uh, is Robert Kanaga. <laughs> He's looking away and pretending like I didn't say his name. But all the art that you're seeing around here, they, they these are Roberts. Uh, you know, so quite a bit of art. And, and I didn't get over to the special corner over there, Robert. But you were telling me I should go over there too. But all these colorful, colorful works, but all these wall hangings, um, most of which it sounds like are yours, Robert. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your art? Sure. Uh, most of you have met me before <clears throat> and know a little bit about me. I'm, I came back to art when I was 40, exactly 30 years ago. And I had been denied a trip to Paris by my dear father at the age of 15. I had a scholarship from Oregon State University to go to Paris for two months. And my dad said, no, you're going to work. I said, fine. So I started playing rock and roll and taught him a big lesson. Yeah. <laughs> And so when I came back to painting, came back to printmaking and drawing, I was just, it was like releasing a switch. You know, suddenly I was someone else. I, I didn't even recognize myself. And so I paint continuously, every day, no matter where I'm at, I'm at I do some kind of mark making. But the painting that I want to talk about is actually the one that we're seeing there. I was, I was struggling with that painting, the base of that painting. I had kind of a landscape in mind and kind of this and kind of that, and I wasn't ever satisfied. And one day I was listening to a podcast about Nelson Mandela and an interview that he had me, after he'd been released from prison. And I went, okay. And I did that painting. I finished it up, and I'm very... That's, that's, I like that painting a lot. I may not ever sell it. I might just keep it hidden in the closet. Uh, most of the painting, like this one, the red, the bright red, that's called Okada Red. And Frank Okada was the head of the painting department at the university. And we only, we never took classes together. We just sit outside and smoke our cigarettes and talk. And I learned more from that every day from Frank than I ever learned from any other teacher. But. He came into the bookstore one day and said, I need a red, I need a red. And I said, okay, what red do you need? And he says, no, I need a red, I need a red. And I, I said, okay, okay. So we started mixing paint in the aisle of the bookstore. And we came up with that red on top. And that's and he said, okay, I'll take it. 30 tubes of this, 25 tubes of that, and 15 tubes of that. Because so, if you know the word, name Frank Okada, had seen his work at the museum, it's big. Yeah. Like 12 feet by 15 feet wow. big. I wish I could paint that big. Anyway, any questions about the work, please ask. 
and each one has a story. And as you know, I talk a lot, so I'll tell the story. Uh, you mentioned uh, Nelson Mandela. Is that at uh, is that the shore at Cape Town or Southern? You mentioned uh, Nelson oh, oh, Mandela. That is whatever you want. Oh, that's whatever you want it oh, okay. to be. When I painted it, I painted it as being a room, oh. but also the outside. Uh, well, I'm looking at uh, this one on the uh, over here to the right. No, straight ahead. Oh, straight ahead. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, this is not yours on the right. Oh, they're all mine. Oh, they're all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. if, if they're if they've got paint color on them, they're mine. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Oh, thank. The red road. Yes. Is there a story? Yes. Uh, the big painting that's all the way in the back, the giant painting. That one was painted for a friend of mine who was. Uh, we were in high school together, and she married the bass player of Steppenwolf. And so they called me, they, they visited the studio and said, we want one of your paintings for our new house. And I said, okay. So they wrote me a check for $7,000 as a down payment. I painted that painting. I was getting ready to ship it. And they called me up and said, we can't take the painting. And I said, <laughs> And she said, we don't have a house. They were in paradise. Oh. They lost the record, they lost their recording studio. They lost their just finished two and a half million dollar house. Everything gone, and including his bass collection. He had Paul, one of Paul McCartney's bass that was used in Hard Day's Night. That's the kind of bass collection, and all gone. And so I said, okay, so fine, and I painted them their own half that size using the same theme, and I used wood ash in the black layer, oh. and and drove it down to them and gave them their money back. Oh my gosh, thank you. Good, good friends, <laughs> they lost everything. Oh my gosh, bless So that's the story of that one driving back up the coast, that one and the other one, the road one is coming back up the coast from the, and that experience. Mm -hmm. So, a little emotion. Anyway. Any other, any other questions? Any other answers? Please let me know. Thanks. Thank you for that story, Robert. That was, that was really heartfelt. Um, we have about seven minutes to, to look at Robert's work, and please take your time. And of course, Robert's here to answer any questions or, or tell more stories about that. Let's see something more green. Yeah, so I've got an imprint of that. And then I thought up more about it, they said, I want a sunrise. Hi, I'm Robert Canega, and I'm the uh, curator at the uh, gallery at the Watershed, which is where we are now. And this is a group show that was co-curated uh, with Susie Lauderdale. Uh, who teaches, the, uh, teaches printmaking at uh, Lane Community College. And we put this show together from printmakers who have a connection to Eugene and who have lived here uh, or worked here or done workshops here. And one of the major players is a guy named Dan Weldon. And Dan lives in Sag Harbor, New York. And I met him a number of years ago doing a workshop at Santa Fe and brought him out here to Lane Community College to do another show. And to, I showed him at Opus 6, along with the show at, uh, along with the workshop at LCC. And he has a real deep connection to printmaking on the, in the Northwest. He comes out here often. And his, he is the guy that invented solar plate. And he did it on a golf course in Japan many, many years ago. He was playing with a couple of Japanese businessmen and the caddy was interpreting. And Dan asked them what they did. And they said, well, we make golf balls. And he reached over and picked up a golf ball and looked at it and he says, how do you get the signature on there? And so they took him to the factory the next day and they showed him the process. And from that experience, he ended up with the polymer that he uses for this. After about seven years of research and working with the company, now you can buy the solar plate and create images of your own. And it's quite an amazing process. I use it in my work almost exclusively in my photographic etchings. And uh, Dan uses it 
with frosted glass and draws on the glass and then prints that. And it's it's wonderful process. But everything in this show, uh, we have uh, everything but stone lithography, I think. We've got etching, we've got mezzotint, we've got wood block, we've got linoleum block, we've got uh, engraving. It's just really a rich, beautiful show. And if you get a chance, please come and see it. One of the things that I love about uh, solar plate and using my studio, I have a non-toxic studio. I don't use any paint thinners. I use turpentine, but real turpentine, not the stuff that they gum turpentine, the stuff that's cheap. I use real English distilled turpentine and it's much less volatile and you use much less of it. I don't use any type of paint thinners, Gamsol, any of that stuff. It's all very toxic. And this is, I use a lot of water-based inks, and when I use oil-based inks, I still clean with soap and water. I've got brushes that I've had for 20 years that I clean with soap and water and they look brand new. Uh, and the solar plate, because you're creating an etching without acid, you're doing it with the sun and water. Then you're not breathing the fumes, you're not getting your hands in the acid, you're not you know, permeating your space with this horrible chemicals and it's much less toxic and most of the time when I'm washing plates I do it in a dish sink uh, that I take outside and wash the plate in that and then I let that dry in the plate so that I can scrape up if there's any residue and throw it away. That way it's not flushing down the toilet uh, into the system. And it's just another step that you can take to be a little more safe. And it's a great alternative for people that want to do small presses, uh, pieces of relief, like I did today. Uh, it's easy, it's efficient, and it's, it teaches you a lot of care because it's kind of hard. But it's a great alternative to, to any other type of printing, printmaking. Take this over.
No, I went, I went up uh, a little later. I went up on Tuesday and uh, shot the, the vineyard from behind the hill. You got a good straight on view. Should be quick, but this piece was written by a, a Serbian composer. His name is Dobojša Zivković, and he's one of the most pro prolific percussion composers right now. He's written a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, folk music, actually. He writes a lot of marimba music, but he's also into tribal stuff. Uh, the piece that we're going to do for you now is very tribal sounding. In fact, I think that he writes it's supposed to be wildly ritualistic. And it's for three players, it's called Trio Per Uno, and they all share a bass drum in the middle, and they'll all be playing the bass drum, sometimes at the same time, sometimes at different times, and it really sounds like it's just one player playing the bass drum. And they all have the, the same instruments around the bass drum. They all have a couple of gongs that are muted, and bongos, and sometimes they play, uh, well, there's a little bit of improvisation towards the end, and. I think that you'll agree it's very, very tribal. So this is Trio Per Uno by Nebojša Zivković.
awesome program for you tonight. My name is Jessica. I'm the first Friday Art Walk Coordinator for Lane Arts Council. How many first time art walkers do we have here tonight? Awesome. How many like 30 time art walkers do we have here tonight? Who's here every time? Love it. Love it. So welcome. The first Friday Art Walk is every month rain or shine. Luckily we lucked out on the shine part today. We're so excited to have you. So you have some options tonight. You can join the tour with us, hear from the featured artists, or you can go ahead and check out our Art Walk Guide. All the fun stuff that's happening tonight is in this Art Walk Guide. So if you don't have one, Mariana right here can hook you up. You'll also notice we have a really cool Springfield mural tour coming up. It's going to be June 22nd. We're starting in Springfield at the Fountain in City Hall. And if you forgot what I said already, we have a nice ad for you right here. So the Art Walk is made possible by awesome sponsors that want to make the arts succeed in Eugene. So our sponsor tonight is the Oregon Bach Festival. Can we give a hand for them? in KLCC. Awesome, awesome. We're so thrilled for that partnership. Also tonight, there's a great dance performance going on in Kesey Square. It's funded by the Downtown Program Fund from Cultural Services. So you can watch in the beginning, or if it's your jam, there's a community dance later on, starting around 6.45. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our Art Walk host tonight. Her name is Janelle McCoy. She's the executive director of the Oregon Bach Festival. And if you know, the season's coming up right around the corner. And she's also had some experience as the executive director of the Chamber Orchestra of Philadelphia and the Mendelssohn Club of Philadelphia. And she is a career mezzo-soprano. So help me welcome Janelle. Good to see everybody. You know, this will be my third art walk, and it has never rained when I do the art walk. So I'm hoping, I thought I might break it today, but it's gonna hold, I know it's gonna hold. We're gonna have a great walk tonight. And I love, I love this, it's new to me, this new location for New Zone Gallery. I love the flow of it and, the, and just the way the art is set up tonight. So let's, let's have a nice round of applause for New Zone Gallery tonight. Yes, absolutely. So we have a couple artists tonight, in addition to, you know, many others that I hope that you'll take advantage of. Uh, Marilyn Marcus and Grant Bruckner, although I understand that Steve LaRiccia will stand in for Grant. Um, so I wonder, where's Marilyn at? Marilyn, come on up, come on up. It's so nice to meet you. So Marilyn, I understand your work is over here. If people haven't looked at Marilyn's work, I was really taken by, you know, that you do watercolors as well as um, mosaics, glass mosaics, and those seem really opposite to me somehow. So I wonder if you could just talk about what's drawing you to those two mediums. Well, I started with the watercolor. And probably before that, just doodling while I was at the other jobs I didn't really want to be at. And though I love them. Um, and then I met Ellen Gayhart, and I think she's the teacher of many of us here, and love the watercolor. And night, oh gosh, 2004, I was back in Pittsburgh, my hometown, and visiting a cousin who is a well-known glass mosaic artist. She has two four by eight pieces at the Pittsburgh International Airport. And just really enjoyed it, enjoyed working with her, and there's a, a freedom in it because you, you can just use broken pieces. <laughs> it's wherever your mind might go with it. It's not as exacting as an other stained glass uh, art. And once uh, it's warming up now, and my glass studio is in the garage, so I will be back to doing more of that. And uh, it's, it's 
focusing, both of them, it is a meditation. And that's what art is, and with watercolor, you have to be there. Unless you get more abstract, which might, I might do someday. <laughs> okay. Um, any, any questions? Because I might keep verbaling. Any? Any questions for Marilyn? Yes. What's your favorite scene or do you like portraits or do you like landscapes? I, I like landscapes. Um, it's true, I can branch out to portraits and I've done some of that, but not yet. Uh, florals I do enjoy, but I seem to go to the landscapes a lot more. Um, just give me a challenge and I'll try it. Sorry, I'm talking to the mic. Give me a challenge and I'll try it. <laughs> like this. <laughs> right? That's great. I was very taken, Marilyn, when I was looking at your works on the wall, and I felt like I was going through a journey in Oregon. And I think that must speak to your, your love of landscapes. You know, all the favorite places that I have in Oregon, I'm still relatively new to Oregon, I feel like you've captured for me, so um, it, it, it looks like that you've traveled around the state quite a bit as well. And yes, yes, and hopefully more so. The knee and various adventures have slowed me down. Uh, and Oregon just calls, okay, and you can certainly use more beauty in the world, and Oregon's got a lot of it. So if you haven't seen Marilyn's works, her works are right over here, right over my right shoulder. Look for her beautiful mosaics, her organ landscapes, her florals, uh, her watercolors, uh, all, the, all the above. And I believe your art is for sale, as most you know, of this art is. Uh, so please support our local artists. This is a wonderful space for us in Eugene to be able to show the work of our local artists. It's really important, and we don't have enough spaces like this. So let's make sure that we support New Zone Gallery and our local artists. Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to give another shout out to our classical guitarist tonight, David Rogers. As I was walking around and looking at the, all the art, I heard him playing some box, so thank you, David. Uh, thank you for that shout out. And uh, I am Janelle McCoy, I'm from the Bach Festival. We get started in a couple of weeks, which is why I have bags under my eyes. And um, so if you haven't bought your tickets yet, if you haven't gotten a brochure, we've got some brochures at the front. I have some more in my bag over here. There's a lot to see this year, a lot to do. We have everything from, from jazz to, um, you know, your more classically oriented pieces. So there, there really is something for everybody and we hope to see you there. We actually have one of our shows, a children's show, that will be at the Wildish Theater and it will be the first time we're in Springfield. We're really very excited about that. And now we want to pay some attention to um, Grant Brookner's work, which uh, which Steve is going to talk about. I, I understand Grant's not a talker. Usually I can get people to talk, but I, I respect I respect his privacy. Now Grant's works are over here, and uh, you'll see a life-size warrior, uh, a lot of different kinds of works too. I was very taken by, for example, that rainbow apocalypse piece over there, and then there was this beautiful cherry box made with uh, a felt top. And uh, Steve, I'm wondering if you can talk about Grant's works. Thank you, Janelle. Can everybody hear me this way? I don't need no snake and mic. I made, it, I made a deal with the big guy upstairs, so we have this nice, beautiful weather. And you're right, Janelle, that every first Friday, if it's going to rain, it always clears up. It has done it for decades. I'm talking a little, I don't know a lot about Grant's work. Grant, can you raise your hand, please? There's Grant Buckner. He did the show in Rainbow Apocalypse. You can ask him specific questions about his work. It's a wonderful show, so if you have some time, please check it out. A few other things. Uh, thank you for introducing David Rogers, our musician. I want to just say that the New Zone is over. Very, it's nice that you all came out here on this wonderful evening. We are open seven days a week, Sunday through Saturday, noon to six, so please come on back. A couple other things that are coming up this month is we will be at the Second Star Festival at 32nd in Maine in Springfield. Uh, so come out, check that out on the 29th and 30th. 
Also next month, we'll have a 50th anniversary country fair exhibit in the Clausmeyer Room. I know there's something else I was going to say, but I forgot. So, I'm going to turn this over to, um, to Grady uh, Tarbutton, who's part of the photo zone that is in the back here. So, take it away, Grady. Thank you, Steve. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Grady. And as many of you know, PhotoZone is an organization that has been around for 31 years. And when we look at our history, our track record, we've always had a great relationship with NewZone. And we're very proud to be back here having a gallery and out in front of the public much more than we have been in the past. So I really want you folks to take some time, walk through the, uh, how many photographers do we have? About 20? Uh, this month, I encourage you to go back there and take a look. The other thing that I want to announce is that we are having our jury show in July. So those of you that are photographers, get your work out, uh, submit it to us. We'll be accepting, what is it, June 29th and June 30th. Over at Emerald Park Center, we'll be taking in photos and then we'll be judging them on the evening of, of the, the 30th, Sunday. So if you've been taking photos and you've been wanting to get out in front of the public, get, get your, uh, an opportunity to show your work, we encourage you to look at the jury show. So again, PhotoZone is very glad to be here. A lot of our artists, a lot of our photographers are here tonight. Take a few minutes, talk to them, ask questions about the photographs. I'm sure they've got some great stories for you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Enjoy your evening. Thank